Hello and welcome back to Channel Codex. This is your host Afzal and you're watching Flutter Clock App Series. In this series, we are targeting to create this application from scratch and by end of the series, we will host this application on store. So consider subscribing the channel if you haven't already. This is episode two of the series. In first episode, we created this animated clock. If you haven't watched the video, link in the description. And in this episode, I have divided the topics in three parts. So basically first we will design the layout in second chapter we will use assets and fonts and in third chapter we will make this page dynamic so that it can fit on all the screens so make sure you watch full video and without any delay let's jump into the code we are into visual studio code we will begin our design by providing background color to the scaffold and later we will wrap this clock view inside a column so if you see in the design on the left side, everything is placed vertically and column is the best fit for that. I'll keep this image somewhere in the corner so that I can refer it later. And let's begin our design. So this is going to be very basic design. I'm going to fast forward it because I'm using only text widget with some basic styling. You can stop and see the video. And we are just wrapping it in column and rows as per the need. We are going to calculate actual values for time and date just after we finish this design. And if you want to know more about rows and columns and the basic of layouting in Flutter, go ahead and check this tutorial. I have explained in detail how it works. Link in the description. Perfect. The basic of layouting is done. In chapter 2 of this video, we're gonna cover how to make it flexible and cover entire page. Before that, let's calculate actual values to show in time and date section. Although we have a date time object with us, we cannot show it directly on the screen. We have to format it. And for that, we're going to use INTL package. INTL stands for internationalization. And this package is provided by Dart team itself. I just wonder why they didn't provide this package inbuilt inside Flutter because this is very common functionality like we always want to do formatting on date time object. Anyways, we're gonna use date format method from this package and convert the date time in the desired format. For time, we're gonna use HHMM format. The capital HH stands for 24 hour format and the same thing we will apply for the date also. We will use triple E D with triple M. If you want to know more about this formatting, you can go ahead and check this link. Here you can find all the keys for different date and time format. So here's the tip for you guys. Whenever you add any package in PubSpec YAML, make sure to rerun the project. Sometimes you can see the data, you can see the changes right away, but sometimes it will not appear. So always make sure that you rerun the project and it will work perfectly fine. One final thing we are going to calculate here is the sign of offset. Why we need that? Because when we get time zone offset from the date time object, it gives in the format of hours. It will have negative sign when it's a negative offset, but for positive offset, it doesn't show any sign. So we have to write our own logic to find out that. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna compare whether the string starts with minus or not. If it's not starting with minus, we'll just make the sign as plus. It's that simple. Fine, let's go ahead and use this offset sign and offset time zone value inside our UTC label. And we are done with the half of screen. Now what we have to do is wrap entire thing inside a row and we will design the menu icons. Our menu itself is a vertically placed buttons. So I'm going to use column again and inside that we will create a flat button. If you see the design of the menu, it has an image and it has a title. So for that, we will put a child as column again. And inside that, we will create two children. For image, I will simply say Flutter logo as of now because we don't have the image ready. And for the title, we will use a text widget. Something like this. The same flat button we can repeat multiple times to create all the menu items. And let me bring in the center by using main axis alignment to center. And this menu icon is ready. Now we want a divider in between this menu and the main page. So for that, I'm going to use vertical divider now. And we have to specify color and width so that we can see it properly. And that's it. 
The final thing we will do is we will wrap this container with the expanded widget so that it takes all the remaining space and it fits inside that. Perfect. So we are done with the chapter one. We designed this page. In chapter two, we're going to use fonts and assets to make this page more awesome. First of all, we'll create a folder named assets. Here we are going to bring all the images and all the fonts which we are going to use later in the project. So I just dragged and dropped all the images in the root directory and all the fonts inside a subfolder called fonts. Second thing we have to do is we have to register all these assets in the pubspec YAML. To register images, it's very easy. You just have to uncomment these lines and provide the name of the folder where your images resides. That's it. For the fonts also, we're gonna uncomment these lines, provide the font family and the file names where your font resides. That's it. Now let's get back to our page and replace the Flutter logo with image asset because now we have the images. So I'm going to delete this Flutter logo and I'll say image.asset and we have to provide the full path of the image. And now we can see that the image got updated. We can duplicate the same flat button couple of times to create all the menu items, but we're going to do it in proper way. We will extract the method with which we can reduce the code duplication. So just simply click here and with Alt Enter, you can extract method, provide the name of the method and it will create a new method for you guys. We need to create parameter for image and title so that we can use same method for different different menu items. So we will define two parameters with title and image. Title we are going to use inside the text widget and image we will use in image.assets. Because now we have a common code, we can do all the formatting option here. We don't need to do it again and again. So I'll just wrap this flat button with the padding and we'll change return type of this method as padding widget. Let's go ahead and pass the parameter from calling method and we will duplicate this method again for other menu items. One thing I missed here is to provide the asset directory. Make sure you provide full asset name over here, otherwise it will not reflect. And this is working fine. So I'm going to duplicate it a couple of more times for my other icons and it's done. So our menu item is done. We need to resize the image. So how we can resize it, we'll go to the same method and we'll say that this image is already scaled 1.5 times. So for actual value, it will reduce the size. Perfect. Now it's time to change the font for all the text widget. So I'll apply font family to Avenir to all of the text widget real quick. That's it. And we're going to move to chapter three. We are going to use flexible widget to divide the screen in proportion. So what happens with flexible, it will sum up all the flex values and it will divide the screen in that proportion. And with flex fit, you can tell the layout whether you strictly want that size or let the children decide size automatically. We can also group the widgets together and assign flexible widget collectively instead of applying on individual widget. Similarly, we will apply flexible on entire page and finally, we'll make the clock align center. Meanwhile, I apply flexible on all the widgets. I will request you guys to go ahead and follow my Twitter and Facebook page. There we can have discussion about Android, iOS, cross-platform development and a lot more about Flutter. Well, that being said, let's get back to the tutorial and complete the last action of this episode. So our page started looking perfect. Now we want to customize the size of the clock as per screen size. Let's go ahead and create a parameter in a clock view to accept size value. And now instead of using hard coded width and height, we can use this parameter. To access size, you need to write widget.size because we are in a stateful widget and this is how we have to access it. Let's go ahead and change the size from calling page. 
I'll make it 300 this looks big let's make it 250 and this looks perfect now you can see the clock hands are moving outside the boundary to fix that we have to go to clock view again and modify all the strokes to relative data so instead of giving hard-coded value we will say size dot width divide by 60 divide by 20 and for radius calculation I am going to find relative value by multiplying canvas radius like 90% of the radius 40% of the radius and so on to check how our clock responses to different size we are gonna go back to home page and assign a different value so this time I am going to say 100 pixel and we'll see how it looks you can see the clock becomes very small and that is how it becomes responsive so instead of giving hard-coded value we'll give it a value from media query and with that we came to end of our tutorial as a final touch I'm going to change the font for some of the text so that it looks nice and clear and that's it I hope you guys enjoy the video if so then hit the like button and provide your feedback in the comment section below in next video we are going to create this full functional alarm page so make sure to subscribe the channel and i will see you guys in the next one so make sure you watch full video and without any delay let's jump into the course